<laughs> right, go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Welcome to ADH Derpcast. I am Stephen. And I guess I'm still Harv. You still are. Um, how are things? How, are be, uh, <laughs> how are things? How are you? How have things been? What's going on? It's been a few weeks and we're both really fucking out of practice. Man, I am... Um, I'm loving our new setup. Right? Yes. So just a huge shout out to our mate Louise, Dr. Louise Cleary. We might have to cut this out if she doesn't want to be mentioned, but uh, she's letting us use our lovely little office here yeah. down in Docky, and it's gorgeous and very it's really nice. Yeah, very impressed with the space. It's lovely to be in a space where, you know, you can feel comfortable yeah. and not just, <laughs> you know, full of shit everywhere. Um, uh, yeah, like the fucking graveyard of Harv's previous... Everything's yeah. <laughs> so much shit in that place. I do like your office space though. I think it's really cool. Um it's a lovely office. It's just there's too much stuff. Like there's there's almost probably like three houses and three family families worth of stuff in yeah. there just from the last five years or so. Plus like fucking everything else. Like it's like a dumping ground yeah. half the time, like um, and yeah, it does like 3D print and stuff and guitars and fucking like, and like stupidly me, I love to go completely out of out of the way to make things like big and excessive. So like my desk, you know, my desk oh, it's is like, huge. It's like I don't know six foot one side and eight foot the other side. It's like an L shaped couch, but yeah. as a desk. Yeah, because why not? Yeah, exactly. But so, it's cool. I like it. It's it is good cool. for like it was perfect for what we were using it for. Um, oh, you're giving a little shout out to your bruises. Oh, the bruises, yeah. So uh, I fell down the stairs. Flashing the guns. Um, I have no guns left anymore. They're, they're <laughs> long gone. Rachel showed me a picture the other day of when I was going to the gym and I nearly turned gay on myself. I'm going to need to see that. I remember there was one picture on Instagram that was you on the beach, like holding up. Oh, yeah, yeah, up. yeah. That was, that, that reaffirmed my gayness. Because um, <laughs> you needed that like Yeah, it kind of it was a little uh, recharge. But I'm gonna need to see the Rachel picture. It's literally just me pushing the buggy, right? Okay. But I was going to the gym, my arms were lovely and svelte. They were bigger than usual. Okay. They're and already pretty tanky. I probably came out of the gym, you know, so you had the fresh recently point. enough. Yeah. Uh but like compared like I'm looking at myself now, having been Jesus eight months out of yeah. the gym probably. Which is just disgusting to think about. And looking back, it's like a completely different person. What was your routine in the gym? Like, what would you do? Like, when, what, like were you like a supplement bro? Or? No, I wasn't into supplements. I took creatine. So, yes, you were. <laughs> which, well, no, the, creatine is the second most studied s- yeah, substance on the planet. Right? In, yeah. After caffeine. And studies and doctors and everyone says that, like, not medical advice, uh, that everybody should be taking it. Yeah. It's it's so important for, you know, muscle it's health. Basically, a even cognitive block. health, it's really important for. Yeah. It's like super important for protein absorption or something as for, or something along those lines. I can't I can't remember exactly the specifics of it because it's been so long since I, you know how we go. Yeah. ADHD brains when we're looking at stuff, especially stuff that I'm going to absorb myself. I'm like, I'm doing all the research into this. <laughs> then as soon as you drop it, gone. Yeah, 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 completely out of the mind. But look, yeah, I think every, from the research that I did way back, yeah. everybody should be looking into uh, creatine to just take as a daily supplement because it's so good, it's so important. Um, and it's not about building muscle. It's not like what people think, you know, steroids going to give you huge, big muscles. You're not going to turn into a fucking bodybuilder overnight. But it helps your body. I remember something along that. It helps your muscles absorb protein, liquids. Like, so... When you're when you're taking creatine, you have to take it with a certain amount of water. Yeah. Right. So you're, you, what actually happens is, when you're kind of starting your dosages, your body, the creatine helps your muscles absorb water. Yeah. And your muscles get a little bit bigger, but you're essentially retaining the water in your muscles. So yeah. you put on a bit of weight, right? Hashtag swell. Yeah. Um. But that's kind of like a side effect. Yeah. That's not what you're doing it for. You're doing it for the performance, the cog- the cognitive help, the just general health. And the positive failure because like what people don't really realize about working out what you're actually doing is like 
tearing their muscle. Yeah. Rebuilding the muscle and improving it time and over and over and over. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you're like ripping it and so it, repairing yeah, it. It helps with recovery. Yeah. It helps with like kind of staving off serious uh, like domes and stuff like that. Yeah. Delayed That's onset dumb. muscle. Oh, there you go. Okay. So no, you go in, you don't really different in my world. <laughs> You go in and you do a really diff- a really heavy session. That's also the same with Tom's and my You're s- You're sore the next day. That's the same with Tom's and my Which are really sore the day after that. Same. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm not squirreling my way out of this one. No, no, you're, you're in. Oh, God. Right. That's same in my world. So, anyway, DON, no, delayed onset muscle soreness yeah. um, helps with that. And I think uh, what they say is like maybe you could get one to two to three extra reps out of your session if you're you know kind of up on creatine okay um, um just quick side note yeah when the fuck did we become like a workout bro podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about our session I wish, we, I wish we were because <laughs> my like energize me to get back into it i really need to and fucking so annoying the guy next door bought like a whole big gym rack mm-hmm. and he's got it in his front room so every time I'm going out to do the bins or whatever, I see the rock there and I'm like, oh, I wish I had one of them in my house. Like, This is, now, you're actually reminding me of something because Graham's been talking about this kind of thing because when we were getting married, we were heavy in the gym. Um, we were getting up at like five, yeah, going to a PT, doing like really intense uh, workout stuff. Um, we were both quite in shape, still fat fucks, but in shape, in shape fat fucks. I remember, you, no, you were really skinny. Yeah, we were. Like, you looked really good. Put a lot of work into it. Um, <laughs> and the PT we were using at the time, he's still still a mate and he's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but Graham's been looking at this other guy who he's been, um, his whole thing is that like people have kids, people have lives, people have like really like intense schedules yeah. that they can't, like focus on like going to the gym five or six times a week and managing their diets in that kind of way. And it's, um, I was looking at his results because that, that's his whole thing that he builds plans for people around that yeah. and that people can't get to the gym or can't buy big racks. Um, I could, I just don't have anywhere no, to put it. No, you cannot fuck off. You know, um, I'll, I'll, if I want something, I'll find a way to pay for it. I know, that's true. No, that came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I didn't I, jump on that. Yeah, I could see it in uh, the back of your eye. So his whole thing is that he works to people's schedules and you're very, 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 very busy. Um, but the, the, the other thing about me is I have done this for since i was like 14 and again with the research like i've done yeah. all of the research i've read all of the everythings i know what i need to do and i know how to do it and i know how to do it properly i spent a good like three four months last year with a pt which just kind of um like reinforced the knowledge reinforced exactly you know that i knew what i was doing yeah now he did help me with some you know, smaller things and techniques and stuff like that, which was great. But the accountability, even though I've talked about not being accountable before, mm-hmm. the accountability of going to the trainer because I've paid him like 300 quid or whatever it is. Like I have this appointment, I go and I can't get it. I can't get out of it because I paid for it. Yeah. That was the thing that really pushed me. But uh, I was going to, before I started the masters, before I started the coaching, it was like executive coaching. Yeah. I was going to do PT, um, but I couldn't get the funds together. As a PT or you're going to... I was yeah. going to do a course to become okay. a PT. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, I know, I know what I need to do. I know how to do it. I have a program. I could modify my program if I wanted to. So the problem is motivation. The problem is time. It isn't. As every, as That's everything an illusion. Is. It's not though. It is though. Because I was explaining this. So in the coaching... Uh, in the coaching course that I'm doing now, we do three and a half hours, three hours, three hours on a Thursday evening, right? Yeah. And within that, we do breakout rooms where we coach each other based on what we've learned. Yeah. And I was saying this to my coach, my peer coach, the other day. It was like, I have all of the, we were talking about resources, you know, for how can you achieve your goals? Yeah. I have all of the resources. The only resource that I struggle with 
is time. And the time exists in different ways. Yeah. And it exists in different chaotic ways. So like, you know, a normal household might be people get up and go to school and then, you know, go to work, come home, do your dinner, then go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. Get up in the morning early, go to the gym. That doesn't work for me in my house because it's too chaotic. It, Every it single is. day is different. Yeah. You know, my daughter is two and a half. She's uh, potty training at the moment. She's waking me up in the middle of the night to go for wheels. She wakes up from anywhere from like five o'clock to seven o'clock in the morning, which was my kind of time to go to the gym before. Yeah. Um, And then obviously we've got school, we've got things during the day and job hunting and studying and all this other stuff. But every single Podcast. day is completely different. So there's no, the morning slot was the only available slot. Yeah. And that's out the window now with Evie being kind of just chaotic in the morning. Yeah. Um. It, yeah, it's flexible time management is. And evenings as well. Yeah. Evenings make sense. Yeah. But evenings I've got, we're, we meet on Monday evening. And Wednesday evening. And Wednesday evening. Uh, Thursday evening is coaching and then it's the weekend I saw well you forgot Tuesday um, Tuesday is the only open day and you Friday can't go to the gym once a day once a week and Friday Friday weekend again you never know what's going on on the weekend sure it, weekends are, are chaotic but the time is there and I if saw, I could if I could interject Again, I know I'm doing it loads. That's okay. Um, I the 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 problem is a a solid box of time. Yes, I have time throughout the day. Like I sit down and do, you know, five minutes while I'm doing something else, yeah. lifting a few weights or whatever. But that's kind of not how I like to do it. Do you know what I mean? I want an hour. Okay. To go and do my bits. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um. Then you're screwed. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I just have to be fat. Like, yeah, you're just, that, that's just there. I can't solve your problem there. Yeah, tough sauce, bro. I know, I know. But look, I'm I'm trying to work on the diet, and I think the diet is one of the main things. You know, for me, diet is paramount. Yeah. Like, I can do all the lifts. I can do all the like all the exercise and stuff, and I can get my motivation to do that and do all the. Oh yeah, I feel great doing this. Yeah, yeah. and I never do. Um, but. For me, the diet is the hardest part to maintain. And it's always the first part that will fall off. Um, And I have this extreme habit of like going extreme in terms of diet. And it's like, I'm only going to eat chia seeds three times a day um, and things like that. And like Graham is like, he's on his fucking, he's on his little fucking binge again of like, I'm going to fry up some spinach. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'm going to fry up some spinach. But with no oil. Okay. So it's like, um, I'm going to have some, like, chicken and broccoli and spinach and, like, I'm going to, like, put seeds on it and shit like that yeah. and thinking I'm fucking the business. And I do. I drop loads of weight. Yeah. And then go, yeah, put chicken fillet roll. And uh, then it all goes out the window. Um, so diet is always my big downfall. Um, so that's, like, we had no plan with this conversation yeah we've kind of gone down this route and one of the big things one of one of the big things with adhd that i found is binge eating yeah and binge drinking as well which i don't do anymore but uh so tell me about your experiences just generally you know like obviously you're talking about now but kind of expand on it talk about the how, eating how has it been you know reflecting on it from the adhd perspective so this is something i've thought about a lot and we haven't talked about this in any kind of expansive way. Um, but, and it's something I was trying to figure out a way that I could elaborate on it. Um, but for me, because it is a big part of ADHD. Yeah. And that kind of impulsive uh, behavior is a big part of ADHD. But for me, it's kind of magnified and it's kind of like squared because I also have impulse control disorder, which can, is so a comorbidity. Yeah. Commonly, um, diagnosed with ADHD Um, and it's something I feel deserves that we dig into properly 
Um, but that is a big issue in terms of eating and stuff. Basically, when you boil it right down to what what it is, if something feels good, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, and as a result of that, I've tended to, without knowing that I, I had that diagnosis, I only got the diagnosis at the same time I got the ADHD one, and mm. um, without knowing I had that, I knew I had that as a personality trait. Yeah. And I knew that there was a, there was a stop button and a go button and there was no in between. If I was drinking, I was drinking. If like I was, <coughs> if I was to go down the drug route, which I never did, I knew that it, there was, there was off drugs and there was on drugs yeah. and what, everything that that would entail. Um, because I knew that once I got dopamine from something, I was going to seek it out more and more and more and more. And not even that I found when I was getting those dopamine hits from whatever behaviors I was engaging in, it turned off my brain. So I was able to then use it as a form of medication. Yeah. Um, I know you're laughing because I know we've talked off camera <laughs> yeah. about um, what that actually meant. Well, that's not why I'm laughing. I'm laughing because it's so similar to how I've been as well. Yeah. You know, growing up and stuff like that. It's, 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 it's self-medication. It's, it's the escapism of yeah. life. It's like when you're talking about, you know, there's on or off. Yeah. I'm drinking or I'm not drinking. I was exactly the same. And yeah. I could not stop drinking until I physically couldn't drink anymore. I couldn't stop drinking either, but yeah. in a different way. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, so that is, that's a secondary issue for me. And food does the same thing. Mm. So I'm obviously like restricted in certain ways. Like I can only eat so much. Yeah. I can only, like... I can only eat until I don't feel good anymore. And I'm quite lucky in the fact that I have a natural stop point. Some people don't. Some people don't. can just keep eating, keep yeah, eating, yeah. keep eating. And like, can if it feels good, could have like seven or eight meals at the one time and stuff. And I've seen people do that. I can't do that. Like once yeah. I'm full, I'm full. But I will seek out what feels good. Mm. Um, and yeah, I find that kind of restrictive diet or uh, being in a calorie deficit really hard because the second I say to myself right I'm going to do this or I'm going to moderate or I'm going to not like and that's like people talk about like oh you, you don't have to restrict yourself you can have a moderated diet that's like you're still able to eat the treats and things like that the second I tell myself yeah that I'm restricting myself or I'm calorie counting or I'm putting myself into a calorie deficit or I'm going to do portion control starving <laughs> I cannot explain the depth of the hunger. And, right, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. It's like I have a worm inside me and I need to feed it yeah, constantly. Yeah. Um, so, and it does not stop. And like, I, like I was doing this kind of recently. I can't remember why I was kind of like watching what I was eating. Um, but I ended up, just, like I had my dinner and then I had like a share bag of crisps and then I had like a round of sandwiches. And like sweets and then a bowl of cornflakes and uh, like over the space of like two or three hours. And that sounds like a normal day for me. Yeah, but for Graham as well sometimes. But <laughs> yeah. uh, um, for me, that's fairly, that's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but there, like there was nothing was filling the hole. Mm. Um, so see, I, I just like to congratulate myself that I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, it didn't stop. It, and there was no, there was no turning it off. And that's, yeah, it's it's fairly extreme in that way. So that's kind of my experience with the, the food side of it. Yeah. Um, alcohol was kind of the same, but less, less alcoholic, if that makes sense. Like, I never felt like I needed to do it. Yeah. But I was like, right, if I'm going to drink, there's not going to be any drinks left at the night, end of the night. Yeah. I'm going to, like, the, the, like, the bottle of JD... I'm buying it knowing I'm going yeah, to throw yeah. out an empty bottle tomorrow. You know what I mean? Um, but I never felt like, I, I never was at the stage where it's like, I'm, I'm, I need to get to the weekend so I can drink. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. It started to creep back into the, like the Thursday, the Wednesday kind of thing. Um, but like if I was going out or if I was going to a mate's house and we were drinking, it was, it was on, you know? Um, yeah. I was exactly the same. And it's funny because, you know, the one of the things that 
you know the literature says and experience says is that people with ADHD have very addictive personalities and reflecting back on you know growing up and stuff like that I didn't have that with alcohol which you would expect and obviously you didn't either yeah. but in the same vein you know if I was going out I was going out and it wasn't coming home until I had to come home yeah I was going out and when the night ended I was looking for somewhere else to go if and there was if the drink was gone yourself, I was looking for sleep. more yeah I, I used to bargain with myself like um like let's say I was out on a Friday and I was up for work in the Saturday morning and I'd be like, right, it's two o'clock in the morning. That means I need seven hours, or I have seven hours left before I have to be in work. Or I have six hours left. It'd be fine. I can have a few more drinks. Yeah. Right, it's six o'clock. I might as well just let myself sober up and just go straight into work without sleep. Yeah. The amount of times that happened. Well, okay. Um, so, I know, I was 20. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a different kind of metabolism back then. But, um, yeah, like that, I used to bargain with myself all the time to, to keep the party going. I was incapable of that because, like, when I drank, I'd literally die for days, like, hung over, just completely in an awful state for multiple days. Yeah. Um, even just getting out of bed was too much sometimes, you know. Um. So I never really had that. There was a there was a short period of maybe a few months where I was working in retail, and I did have that, you know, where because I was just sitting behind a desk not really seeing an awful lot of customers. Um, I was able to do it. I could just hide away, yeah. you know, but I was going into work late, you know, because I was two, three hours sleep. Yeah. I still hung over to death, you know, get grabbing a coffee and a saucy sambo on the way into work and then sitting behind the desk trying to hide. And, uh, yeah, Jesus, I got sacked from that job. It's the only time I've ever had any any issues like with, with work. Yeah. And it was completely reasonable. Like, but that kind of few months was absolutely awful. Yeah. It was in like such a weird spiral that time. When you're in it, it's like you think you're on top of the world, but with also this crushing depression and all yeah. this kind of stuff. But like it's just it's such a weird dichotomy that people don't understand unless they go through it. That like when you're experiencing that it's such a weird like you have this superficial i'm living the best life ever that's what it is yeah and but you're hating yourself at yeah. the same time and it's only on reflection that you're like oh i was really depressed wow yeah um so yeah i've i empathize with that one i've been there yeah and so on the other side of it like that's the excess side yeah how about the other side do you ever have any issues or have you had any issues with like not eating or Stuff like that. Yeah, actually. Like, this is something... And Graham notices this more than I do. Like, if I'm in a project or I'm, like, focused on a game or, like, just kind of... My brain's somewhere else. Yeah. I completely forget to eat. Yeah. And it's like, he'll be like, what did you eat today? Like, there's been times where, like, let's say I'm off for the day and he is in work and he, it's a day where he's in the office. Mm -hmm. He'll, like, and I'm, like, playing a game or whatever at home because it's like, yay, every time. Um, he'll come home and let's just assume in this narrative that it's winter so it's dark when he gets home the lights won't be on mm -hmm. the <laughs> the like i'll like i'll be lit up by the tv screen playing yeah. whatever game i'm playing and he'll be like have you moved did you eat today did you like did you do anything are you sitting in a pool of your own filth um and it's like <laughs> yes to all <laughs> yes to all um so yeah i completely like if i'm if I'm in something, I'm like there's there's no switch off from that yeah. either, and that's another common ADHD thing, um, of hyperfocus. Yeah. So I, I was thinking of the foods thing because I'm exactly the same. You know, I f often forget to eat and drink and all that kind of stuff. When but, you say that to people, they're like, "How are you, fat fuck, man?" Yeah, <laughs> you know? because you binge then. Exactly. Like, I haven't eaten all day. Now I need to get you know, I'll I I'll order a seven takeaway. chickens. Yeah, I'll order a takeaway. I'll. While I'm waiting for the takeaway to come, I'll have a packet of crisps and a bar. Yeah. And then when you're finished your takeaway, I'll have a pint of ice cream. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's all right before bed because you haven't eaten all day. Yeah. Quick side note, what's your takeaway order? Depends where I'm going. Chinese. Chinese. I'm a very bland person. Okay. So like I like a five and one. I do like a five and one. I'm like really intolerant to garlic. So. I never knew that. I love 
shredded chicken. Oh, I do like. But I can't have garlic on it. For our non-Irish, so, so plain, like for our non-Irish listeners and watch- watchers, yeah. What's a five and one? A five and one. So in my Chinese, a five and one is. So let's start with a three and one, right? Yeah. Go so back to basics. You've got rice. Yeah. Curry sauce. Yeah. I usually get barbecue sauce. I don't like curry. And chips. You don't like curry? No. In a tray. <laughs> we need to stop recording. This well, is, this, I mean, this is over. There's, there's. I literally have curry stains on me right imagine now. Imagine the list of all of the things that normal people eat. Mm-hmm. None of them are on my on my list of things that I eat. Wow. I literally eat fuck all. Like, okay. I'm so picky. Brains I'm not too, really plain. Not as too well. bad as I used to be. Um, I've kind of experimented and moved out of my comfort zone with it. But uh, another ADHD thing, eating the same thing all the time. Yeah, that's um, true. But yeah, so. Sauce, rice, and chips in a tray, three and yeah. one, four and one. Sauce, rice, chips, and maybe chicken, beef. Typically or... like chicken balls. In your in your place? Most places, chicken balls. Yeah, really? Four and one, yeah. Okay. Or they do shredded chicken. Yeah. So in that's the four and one. I've also got it with chicken fried rice, which is nice. Chicken, okay. So chicken fried rice, chips, and in sauce. My, that's called a, a special tray or something, I think. Okay, right. So then the five and one has the chicken balls and the shredded chicken in it. Both? Yeah. Okay. You get like two chicken balls and a bit of shredded chicken. None of this is in any way Chinese. I know, yeah. (laughs) I know. Um, So yeah, that's that's what I get sometimes. I like chicken fried rice as well. Yeah. Very plain, like. Yeah. yeah. But like, that's my journey. I don't eat any like Chinese food. No, I do. I tend, like when I'm ordering, Graham's very plain. He'll get like chicken balls, chips and curry sauce. Yeah. And that's like, there's, there's no deviation. Yeah. From yeah. That. Um, I'll go, de- tend to go to like the chef, chef's recommendation section. Well, la di da. And pick out, go like, ooh, tin gin duck. That looks nice. Okay. Yeah. Or like uh, char sui, char sui, char sui, something like that. Are you having um, a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pork thing. Um, right. Pork belly and it's very very nice. Um, I tend I like I. You don't give a shit. You just eat anything. I'll put that in my mouth. Yeah. Well, um, we know that. Yeah. Except for tomatoes. Tomatoes are the fucking devil. Why do you not like tomatoes? Um, I think it's a texture thing. Texture. Because I like tomato sauce. Yeah. I like in pasta. Like I'll, I don't like salsa because it's too tomato bitty. Tomatoey. <laughs> um. Uh, but like actual tomatoes. Yeah. Cooked raw devil. Yeah. What um, about onions? I used to, like the texture of onions used to make me gag. Yeah. But as I've gotten older, I've kind of been okay with it. Raw onions are still a hell no. Crispy onions. Crispy onions are the bomb. King. I fucking hate onions. Best thing in the world. But crispy onions, because yeah. of the texture. Or onion rings. I like onion rings. I don't like onion rings. I, d- I, I, I like, don't like onion, onion rings, rings on a burger. I don't like onion rings. No, go fuck yourself. Um, no, onion rings are nice on a burger. Right. How do we how do we get here? Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> fucking talking about our Chinese orders. Oh, um, I fucking hate tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes. So this is an ADHD podcast about tomatoes. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure there's other ADHD oh, people out there God. who have like <laughs> about tomatoes. Yeah. So we've got a couple of kids in our house who have been diagnosed, right? And it's it's a similar thing, you know. One of them eats fucking everything doesn't give a shit and then the other one is plain as yeah all hell will only eat the plainest stuff you know textures especially similar to me yeah um is just no go like those kind of squidgy and soggy and yeah it's like gloopy fucking tomato oniony type things no i'm gonna it's have to show you the dinner or well lunch i made the other day i got coca noodles right and i made I got pizza because, like, when we're having uh, pizza at the weekend, sometimes we'll make our own pizzas and, like, put our own pepperoni nice. and stuff on it. To cr- try and do, like, kind of modern spend 40 euro yeah. in Apache. Like, um, we will get, like, frozen pizzas and pretty them up. Yeah. Um, so I got my coconut noodles, made my coconut noodles, ripped up some pepperoni, put that in with it, and then made cheese sauce and cooked it all up into cheese sauce. And it looked like an omelette vomit. Nice. And it was the best thing fucking ever. And I sent a picture to a few people and it literally looked like a plate of like, do you remember like in joke shops and you could buy joke vomit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's literally what it looked right, like. Okay. But it was fucking divine. Um, so I wouldn't eat the cheese sauce. I know. I wouldn't eat the noodles. Nope. 
What else was pepperoni? pepperoni. I eat pepperoni. Okay. So it's just those three things. Yeah. I'll have the pepperoni on its own, thanks. Okay. I'll just, no. <laughs> um, a friend of mine sent me his uh, spaghetti bolognese. And it was me. I feel like this is a euphemism. <laughs> no, it was actually like he, he made his spaghetti bolognese, but with like spaghetti hoops. Nice. <laughs> like it looks like to most people it looks horrible yeah but it looked lovely and he like had his mints but the mint the sauce for the mints was like ketchup <laughs> oh, <fuck's laughs> sake. it was incredible yeah uh, he calls it his special bolognese nice um so should change it to special balls yeah i i will float that with him too see if he uh, accepts that as a proposal so yeah that's um that's that i have no idea what we're talking about yeah well, look, we talked about going back to the gym. Yep. Being too fat for ourselves. Agreed. Kind of being severely ADHD, but not getting addicted to alcohol, even though like even though we did, but just not should point. Yeah. On a on a daily basis we yeah. did, yeah. So today I'm gonna to be addicted to alcohol. Okay. And then like tomorrow I'll be grand and won't want want alcohol. I thought you meant literally weekend. like you're gonna head off but and get like a fucking I don't, vodka. I don't really drink anymore yeah I stopped years and years ago and uh so this is one of the things that fucking pisses me off right all of the kind of internet knowledge and you know kind of accepted thing is stop drinking alcohol is terrible for you once you stop drinking you'll feel so much better that didn't happen for me nope that Same. didn't happen for me at all. Like I, I stopped drinking for four years solid and I didn't feel any different than when I was drinking. Now, when I was drinking, I'd probably be drinking, you know, once a week or less, once every two, three weeks, depending. When I was younger, I drank an awful lot, so maybe like twice, three times a week. But uh, before I stopped, you know, it wasn't an awful lot. But I didn't, like, didn't have this massive shift of, hey, you're a non-drinker now. You have this angelic skin, you know, your body Flowing doesn't robes. creak anymore, like, yeah. all this kind of stuff, <laughs> yeah. you know, it didn't lose any weight, Yeah, which is one of the big things that people say, stop drinking and like you lose a lot of weight, didn't happen. Same with fizzy drinks. People are always like, oh, I stopped drinking fizzy drinks yeah. and like I lost like four stone and I'm like, <laughs> I stopped drinking fizzy drinks and gained weight <laughs> yeah, 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 because yeah. I was trying to replace it. But uh, <laughs> Oh God. Um, yeah, no, I, I was the same with drinking I because I tend to mostly not drink but i don't say i'm not a drinker because yeah. i find in irish society if you say you're not a drinker it raises alarm bells it's <laughs> it's know, like, changing it's changing quite a bit and you can tell by the amount of new zero zero things yeah on alcohol and how acceptable like, those yeah are. yeah like i remember the first time me and rach were out for dinner and we seen a non-alcoholic wine yeah and i was blown away and it was delicious you know because yeah. i like to have a glass of wine when, when we're out for a meal um not to drink, but just yeah. for the flavor as you're having. And how it meal. pairs with food and yeah. stuff. Um, um, now saying that, like, I'm a blasphemer and I don't like red wine, but I love a steak. So I'll have white wine with my steak. That's totally fair. You know? Um, I think a lot of the wine food stuff is a lot of wankology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm probably going to get blasted for that, <laughs> but uh, I do think it's a lot of... Sure. Yeah, no whatever. No one really cares. Um, but the... Fuck what was I saying? Oh yeah, I tend to not drink as well. And I'm mostly a non-drinker. Like I like I don't tend to really go out at weekends. Yeah. But if something comes up, I'll go by how I'm feeling. Like if I want to have a few drinks when we're out somewhere, I'll try and do that now and try and like moderate it if yeah. I'm if I'm in that kind of if I'm like I'll have a few drinks. I'll have like one or two and try and like put effort into actually doing it that way. Yeah. Um but most times I'll be like, nah, I'm just going to have like Coke. Not cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Coca-Cola. So um, like I think in the last year maybe I've tried to have a drink three yeah. times. So myself and Rage were away uh, for a night. I remember Monkey, you sent me a picture so of it. Like, yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm going to get myself a nice margarita. I love a margarita, you know. Um, and it's very hard to find an, a good a margarita. Good one, yeah. You know, because you get people who put sugar on it yeah. instead of salt. Yeah, under rim, yeah. And all this stuff. But uh, I had a sip and I just couldn't. I just left it there. Yep. And then I think I tried to have a drink at Christmas, you know, bottle or whatever it was. 
didn't even finish a bottle. And then we were away in, I think it was Lanzarote last year, last September or so. And we were away with all the kids and Rachel's dad. And we have a kind of split apartments. And Rachel's dad came over to our apartment and we were all going to have a drink, you know, sit down. We found all the stuff for Fat Frog. Oh, yes. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, Smirnoff Ice, Bacardi Orange. You can't seem to get Bacardi Orange here anymore. No. Like, it just doesn't exist. And Blue Wicket. So I found it in the shop just up the road from us in Lanzarote. And I bought it for Rachel because she was dying for one for a long time. And uh, I was like, let's, you know, have a few drinks, celebrate, you know, enjoy the holiday. So <laughs> Joe, Rachel's dad, comes over to our apartment in the evening. Rachel's sitting outside having the drinks. And I sit down, have one sip. And I'm like, <laughs> just have not no interest anymore. in this yeah. at all. And that, then, yeah. Can't remember when I drank before. I like. I am kind of the same. Like now, I do like poolside drinks when we're on a sun holiday, um, and that's the last time we were on a sun holiday was with Juliet. So mm. I didn't have poolside drinks on that occasion. Um, and also, Ritalin tends to limit yeah alcohol well, pretty extremely. I think we had a conversation about this. Like, yeah, you don't don't. This is medical advice. Yeah. Do not drink when you're taking Ritalin. It. It like I don't know the full details of it, but it magnifies. You can you can you well can seriously like probably yourself. very very kind of over the top afraid of these things. But like I remember reading about it, and the thing that stood out to me was you could get brain damage. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want any brain damage. Please. No thanks. Yeah, don't give me brain damage. But I'd rather just not have a drink. Regular level, it magnifies the effects and like intensifies. The effects of the alcohol and stuff like that lowers right. inhibitions even further, and they're already fairly low for me. Yeah, and um, just makes everything peak. The peaks and troughs are more peaky troughs. So the Ritalin is magnifying the negative aspects of alcohol. Yeah, interesting. Um, so that's a yeah, that's a no go. I tend to like if I know there's going to be an occasion where there's alcohol around, and I'm like. I, I might have a drink or two. Yeah. Um, I'll tend to skip the old Ritalin yeah. dose on those days. And I've done it a few occasions where it's like I've skipped the Ritalin dose and then it's like, I'm not drinking. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Mood. And then I missed the Ritalin. Like I should <laughs> I should have taken my brain on her. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's, uh, that's the way that one goes. Yeah, so I think the last time I was looking at it, it said like, Make sure there's 15 hours between your Ritalin dose and when you're drinking. Yeah. Or something like that. But uh, look it up if you're going to drink when you're taking Ritalin. Don't yeah. Just, like, don't take chances, please, with your brain. Yes. It's it's a volatile mix. So um, if you're going to, people will do what they want to do. Yeah. Make sure you educate yourself on, yeah. on whatever choices you make. Don't come and crying to us. Seek medical advice. <laughs> um, right. What were we talking about? I'm enjoying this. Just random bullshit. Yeah. Kind of throwing. This is how it was the first couple of times. Yeah. It was. You know, when we, and we really enjoyed it. Yeah. We weren't kind of over overdoing it and trying to kind of, you know, specify what we we're talking about. So it actually feels like proper back to basics, yeah. even though the planning sessions that we've been doing recently have been gearing towards the opposite direction. There's our next topic. This is nice. So we're we're having our like this episode is kind of a let's reset things. Let's have a chat. We've got our new studio space. Thank you, Louise. Um, thank you, Dr. Louise. Sorry. <laughs> um, and everything's kind of nice. Going forward, we're kind of going to be splitting the way the episodes work a bit. There's going to be like episodes like this that are kind of chatty, backy, forty, And then, but there's then also going to be episodes that are going to be very focused, very, yeah. very topic driven. Um, where we're going to be talking about actual things. Um, so that's kind of the plan, the way we're kind of going to do things. Um, I have no idea what I was going to say. Yeah, because you, 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 you I started in three different places. It was like Stephen was back to normal there, mm -hmm. and then you went into fucking on camera, Stephen. Yeah. Leave him behind. He's not allowed. He's not allowed. He's here. not allowed to be here. Yeah, <laughs> we got that feedback early on. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. Look, we. have I think everybody started listening when we're having these kind of just open yeah. random conversations, which this is the first one we've had in a while, mm. 
and it's really nice just to fucking talk bollocks. Yeah. But still kind of in an ADHD perspective. But also we want to kind of help people as well while we're having these conversations. So as Stephen was saying, we want to try to have episodes that are kind of more focused. Still we'll have the kind of conversation and stuff like that. But we'll have come prepared, you know, with topical notes, maybe some data, maybe some, you know, specific tips and tricks or whatever. And some pretty um, editing that shows things on the screen. Oh, God. I, uh, did I agree to that? No, but I'm okay. throwing you under the bus now. <laughs> we need to start Fiverr in this out. Fiverr in the <laughs> editing now. Which, um, uh, yeah, cool. Deadly buzz. Everyone's happy. Yay. Okay. Um, so I think we'll leave this one here. Um, if you're okay with that. Yeah, fine. Um, I'm Stephen. That's Harv. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, give us as much feedback as you can. Uh, let us know what you think of this wonderful office space and what we can do to make it pretty and what we can do to make us pretty uh, because I'm a vain fuck at the end of the day. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it. Bye! Bye!